Lisa Childs. Welcome back to Try Tested and True Instant Pot Cooking, where I share with you instant pot inspirations and ways to feel confident using your Instant Pot. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you seven essential recipes every Instant Pot owner should know. Also, if you have any questions or need more information, I have a full video tutorial on each of these recipes on my channel, so I'll link to those below. The first essential recipe every Instant Pot owner should know is how to make Instant Pot rice. To make Instant Pot rice, add one cup of rice to your Instant Pot with one and a quarter cup of water and a dash of salt. If you want to double this recipe, you can just double the ratio. It's 1 to 1.25 rice to water. I like to give it a little shake to distribute everything and then lock the lid on your Instant Pot, turn the knob to sealing, and then cook for three minutes on high pressure with a 10 minute natural pressure release. After the 10 minutes are up, just open up that lid and fluff up your rice and then you're ready to eat. The next recipe every Instant Pot owner should know is how to make Instant Pot broccoli. It's so easy to steam this and it takes no time at all, so it's awesome to make it in the Instant Pot. First, cut up your broccoli into equally sized florets. I like to just buy the big bag at Costco or Sam's Club because then it's already cut and cleaned for me and I usually don't have to cut too much more. And then I like to use my steamer basket, which I'll include a discount code to below. But if you don't have a steamer basket, just go ahead and put it on top of a trivet or some other Instant Pot safe accessory that will keep the broccoli off of the bottom of the pot because you just don't want it in the water getting soggy. First, add one cup of water to your Instant Pot. Next, put the lid on your Instant Pot, turn the knob to sealing, and then press the manual or pressure cook button and adjust the time to zero minutes. I bet you didn't know that you could do a zero minute cook time on the Instant Pot, but it's perfect for delicate foods like broccoli that cook really fast. Once the Instant Pot is done with that zero minute cook time, it's time for a quick release. Turn the knob from sealing to venting to let out all of that steam and make sure that you watch it really closely because if you don't do it right away, it will be super mushy. Next, open up that lid and then you're ready to eat your broccoli. I have a full blog post and FAQ on how to make perfect Instant Pot broccoli every single time on my website. Try testedandtrue.com. If your broccoli is too mushy, if it's too hard, I have everything that you need to know to make it perfect. So I'll link that blog post below. The next recipe every Instant Pot owner should know is how to make oatmeal in your Instant Pot. This is a perfect meal to make in your Instant Pot because it's hands off. You just throw it in there and then you can just walk away, get everything ready for your morning and then come back and breakfast is done. To make Instant Pot oatmeal, add four cups of water to your Instant Pot. Next, add two cups of regular rolled oats to your Instant Pot, not the Instant Oats and not steel cut oats, those are totally different, and then a dash of salt. Lock the lid, turn the knob to sealing, and then pressure cook for one to two minutes on high pressure with a quick release. It is so fast and easy. I love making this. Open up that lid and you're ready to eat breakfast with whatever toppings you love on your oatmeal. In my Instant Pot oatmeal video, I have a ton of different variations and I also have a post on my blog with those recipes, so I'll link those below. The next recipe every Instant Pot owner needs to master is how to make hard boiled eggs in your Instant Pot. I have tested this extensively and there are lots of methods that work, but I think my method results in the softest cooked white and also a tender yolk that's not overcooked or chalky. It's absolutely perfect. Stack your eggs however many you want. You can have as little as one or up to like two or three dozen and then stack them in a steamer basket or on top of the trivet on your Instant Pot. Add one cup of water and then lock the lid on your Instant Pot turn the knob to sealing, and then pressure cook for two minutes on high pressure with a 12 to 15 minute natural pressure release. As soon as that natural pressure release is done, turn the knob from sealing to venting if it hasn't already let the pin down. 
open up that lid and then take your eggs directly to the sink and start running some cold water on them. You can also place them in an ice bath and that is going to help that peel come off super easily and to stop cooking the eggs so they don't overcook. If you have a gray ring around your egg yolk and the egg yolk is super chalky, that means that you've overcooked your eggs. So then you can peel the eggs. I like to do this little hack where you tap on one end, turn around, tap on the other end, and then roll slightly. And then that eggshell just slides right off. If your eggs don't turn out the first time, I have a full FAQ on my website or another YouTube video explaining everything. So I'll link to that below as well. The next recipe is Instant Pot Potatoes. First, add one cup of water to your Instant Pot. Take your potatoes, and I like to use small russets, wash them, or you can peel them as well, and then put them in your Instant Pot in a steamer basket or on top of a trivet. For small potatoes, I like to cook them for 12 to 14 minutes. For medium-sized potatoes, it's about 15 to 18 minutes. And then for large, really like huge one-pound russet potatoes, it can be anywhere between 20 to 25 minutes. So you kind of have to gauge and then start with one time and then adjust slightly if they're not cooked all the way. So you add the potatoes to your Instant Pot with a cup of water and then you lock that lid. Turn the knob from venting to sealing and then press the manual or pressure cook button and cook for 12 to 14 minutes for these small russet potatoes. And then we'll do a quick release. Open that lid and check with a knife to make sure your potatoes are done. And if they are, then you're ready to eat them. And if they're not, just put that lid back on and then cook for an additional two to four minutes depending on how hard they still are. Now that our potatoes are done, you can just eat them as a baked potato. You can drizzle them with butter and salt, or you can mash them up and make mashed potatoes. So it's really amazing to just be able to cook all those potatoes in the Instant Pot without having to boil a huge pot of water on the stove, babysit it, watch it for 30 minutes. It's super convenient. Also, if you're running short on time, you can cut up your potatoes into small cubes, and small cubes only take three to five minutes to cook. The next recipe every Instant Pot owner should know how to make is Instant Pot Yogurt. It is the best yogurt you will ever taste, and oh my gosh, I just love it. We almost always have it in our fridge as well. So to make Instant Pot Yogurt, you are going to need ultra pasteurized milk, a yogurt starter, and a sweetener if you like. Also, I should mention that your Instant Pot has to have a yogurt function. So if you have an Instant Pot Lux or some of the other models that may not have it, check your Instant Pot before you get all the ingredients for the yogurt, otherwise you won't be able to make it. So first, pour a little bit of that ultra pasteurized milk into your Instant Pot, just a little bit, and then add your yogurt starter. This is anything that has live active cultures in it, so I like to use just pre-made store-bought yogurt, or what I like to do now is freeze a little bit of my previous batch of Instant Pot yogurt and then use that as the starter. So I've dissolved my starter in that milk and I want to whisk it up really well. This is essential because it needs to dissolve all the way, otherwise your yogurt can be a little gritty and that's not good. After that has incorporated completely, add your sweetened condensed milk, and you can use a full can, half a can, or you don't have to use any at all if you just want plain tart yogurt. Whisk in all the sweetened condensed milk and then add the rest of the milk and whisk it up really well. You want it to be really frothy, like completely mixed together. Before you put on the lid to your Instant Pot, make sure that you smell it and make sure it doesn't smell like chili or pot roast or something savory because those flavors will transfer to the yogurt. Next, press the yogurt button and make sure that it's on the normal setting. Then, Set the time for eight and a half hours. You can do less or more, but more will make it tartar. Now it's incubating and after eight and a half hours, you're ready to put it in the fridge. So it should be set at that time and just stick it in the fridge overnight and then in the morning, you can do the spoon test. It's so satisfying to stick that spoon right into the yogurt and see it stand up and then you can just scoop it and just eat it. It is seriously some of the best yogurt you will ever have. The last essential Instant Pot recipe every Instant Pot owner needs to know is how to make frozen chicken in your Instant Pot. 
I'm using this piece of frozen chicken today and this is how big it is. You can see it's a little bit smaller than the regular breast that I normally get. I don't know why this one's smaller. So that's why you have to kind of start at one time and then adjust accordingly. So first add one cup of water to the Instant Pot and then add the trivet. If you wanna cook your chicken in the cooking liquid or sauce, you don't have to use the trivet. And if you wanna shred it up, it's even better when you cook it in the liquid. But I just want mine just plain seasoned chicken breast, so I'm putting it on top of the trivet. For example, if you wanted to cook the chicken in some teriyaki sauce or chicken broth, and you wanted to shred it up to put into enchiladas, I would just cook everything in the seasonings and the broth in the Instant Pot without the trivet. Next, I'm gonna season my chicken with some seasoned salt, and this seasoned salt is so good. I'll leave a discount code below, but it's the only salt I use now. I have like 16 different kinds of salt from this company. So I'm just doing seasoned salt today, but you can also drizzle on some barbecue sauce, some hot sauce, whatever you want to season your chicken, or you can just do it plain. Next, lock the lid, turn the knob to sealing, and then I'll cook this size of chicken breast for 12 minutes with a five to 10 natural pressure release. I do the thin cut chicken breast from Costco for five minutes with a quick release and they are totally cooked. But like I said, if you have really large ones, they can take up to 20 to 25 minutes to cook. So you kind of have to just adjust accordingly. Once it's done cooking, take off the lid and then you'll want to check the internal temperature of the chicken. Chicken should be 165 degrees to make sure it's fully cooked inside and then you're ready to eat it. So this chicken, we can just cut up, put it in a salad, we can put it as part of a main meal, but it's so easy to cook frozen chicken in your Instant Pot. Every Instant Pot owner should know how to make this. So there you have it, seven essential Instant Pot recipes every Instant Pot owner should know. Next, check out my 52 Instant Pot do's and don'ts video, and we'll see you next time. See ya.